Welcome to VAG Air Suspension. This presentation will take you through an overview of how the air suspension system works on VAG vehicles, also how you can diagnose them, and at the end we'll go over how to calibrate them after major work has been carried out. So some of the air suspension components or major components we have here the airbag or air strut all the way to the left there. Then we have the air compressor next to it. Also the valve body in the middle there. And then just to the right of that we have the level sensor. And then of course there we have the air suspension ECU. We will be going in depth into each of these in the next couple of slides. So how the components look whilst they're actually fitted to the car, so the layout of them. Um, obviously we have electrical components like the ECU and the level sensors, also the compressor and valve body. And then on the air side of the system we have the individual airbags or air struts. Again the valve body is obviously part of the air side of things and the air compressor is as well and then also we have an accumulator there at the bottom so looking into the airbag and shock absorber next so obviously on the left there we have a picture of the airbag slash shock absorber there um, so we got the airbag which is sort of the main part of it but there is also a shock absorber that runs up through the center of it that shock absorber just acts like a normal shock absorber would on any other vehicle um, obviously one of the things that can go wrong with the airbag is that it can leak so you can see in that center picture there someone is using soapy water to try and find a leak I will say on these, the most common place for them to leak is towards the bottom of the bag. Then over to the right there, we have the valve. So there's a valve just before the air goes into the bag. The job of that valve is to maintain at least three and a half bar of pressure. So if the pipe splits, then you won't lose all of the air out of that air bag. Now in saying that, we can use that to our advantage when diagnosing the system. So for instance, if we have a leak on the bag itself, then that can leak out all the pressure out of the bag. Whereas if we have a leak before that valve, i.e. the pipe is leaking, then we should still see about three and a half bar of pressure inside that bag. Next then we have the air compressor. Now the job of the air compressor is to build system pressure. On the compressor you have an intake. That intake is there to obviously intake new air into the system. It, can all, it will also be used as an exhaust as well to get rid of the old air out of the system for when you let the vehicle down. As the compressor is a moving component, it is likely that it will wear and cause issues then. Uh, one of the uh, fault codes that we see quite often with the compressor is thermal shutoff. And that's because the system's been trying to build some pressure and the compressor's got hot because it is running, but it just can't build enough pressure. The normal working pressure, I would want to see at least eight bar of pressure there. We prefer around 10 though, ideally. Um, and then the temperature we'd like to see under 100 degrees. Using that live data can be a great way of determining whether the compressor is faulty. Another way is just to simply listen to it, see if it's quite noisy. Um, we also have an activation test on the relay. So we can activate that relay and just listen to see if we can hear the relay clicking and obviously check to see if we are getting voltage down at the compressor when we are activating that relay. Next, we have the valve block. The air suspension ECU will use the valve block to determine where the air is going in the system. So following it from the compressor there, we have the compressor that builds up the pressure. And then obviously we've got several valves inside the valve block there. 
so the ECU can determine which valve to open to send the air to the corresponding uh, air bag or of course possibly even the accumulator and then inside that valve block we also have the pressure sensor there for the system so if you have any issues with that pressure sensor obviously it'll be the valve block that would need to be replaced here we have the level sensor. Level sensors fitted to each corner of the vehicle, so we should have four in total. So on these we can have a look at the live data readings. So we've got those readings at the bottom there. we got on the left hand side there a vehicle which is struggling to lift up the front. So you can see that reflected on the readings there. Uh, but notice how the level sensors are all reading roughly the same to the opposite side so we've got the left front and right front reading close to being the same and then the rear left and rear right reading close to being the same so we know that those level sensors are pretty good there and then in the second image here over to the right we have the front now lifted up so you can see that the, all the readings are quite close to each other so we can determine that the level sensors are reading okay there so we also have the air suspension ECU there that will take inputs like the customer requiring the vehicle to be raised up and then calculate those into outputs so obviously that will go out to the valve block open those valves turn the compressor on and raise the vehicle up then finally we have the accumulator there the accumulator holds system pressure um, and that will act a bit like a buffer and the compressor can build that that uh, pressure over a period of time and then when the ECU needs it, it can instantly have access to that higher pressure. So next then we're going to have a look at how the system looks when it's in use. At this point we just have the vehicle in rest and you can see that nothing's really happening to the system. I will point out that you've got a nice detailed picture there of the airbag and you can have a look at how that operates. You can see there's just a normal shock absorber in the middle there. Um, like I said earlier, they can have an uh, electrical plug going to them and that just uh, to control the shock absorber side of things, not the airbag side of things. So in this example, we have the customer pressing the up button on the button panel at the bottom right there. That information will go up to the ECU. The ECU will have a look at its level data and determine whether it can put the suspension up then in this scenario it can so it puts that information back out to the valve block and then the valve block will open up the accumulator allowing its extra stored pressure from the accumulator to go into the bags now that will usually drop the system pressure so the ECU will usually put on the compressor as well to rebuild that lost pressure so here the ECU has detected that the system pressure is low and obviously it's picked that information up from the valve body and the pressure sensor inside there. So it's put that to the compressor to start running. The compressor is obviously generating pressure and that pressure is going into the valve body. The valve body has opened up the valve for the compressor and also the accumulator. So obviously the pressure is being stored in the accumulator. Here the customer has pressed the down button. The ECU has seen that information. It's had a look at the level sensor information and in accordance to that, it's opened up the valves inside the valve block. The valves that it's opened up is the ones that go for each air bag and also the one that goes to the compressor and it's also opened up a valve inside the compressor to bleed that air out to atmosphere so this is a video taking you through carrying out the basic settings of the air suspension so you go into control unit functions and then adapt default position 
and then it's going to give you a list of the prerequisites there to be met. So obviously you have a read through those, make sure that you meet all of those. Also one that I don't think is actually on there is that the car has to be at a good height, uh, the default height already before carrying it out. So obviously you can't have the car all the way on the floor and then expect it just to uh, do the basic settings. So there it's saying about measuring the height of all four wheels. And so we've got a picture here of how to measure it. So as you go from the center of the wheel cap to the top of the wheel arch, just like the arrow is indicating there. You do that measurement for all four wheels and record them in the corresponding boxes in millimeters. So after putting that, that information in, it goes through various different checks. And here it's asking you to select what type of suspension you have. Now to find that information out, you can find the data sticker in the boot in the wheel well. It will be on there in the PR codes. Uh, if that information is missing or damaged, then you can also find the, that information out in the service book. Again, if the service book is missing, you can find it out online on Irwin. That's the uh, calibration done there. So now we're just going to go out of there, reread the fault codes. So you can see the old codes are still stored in there, but they've changed to sporadic now. So we can clear and reread them, and they should stay gone. And there we have completed. So in the next couple of slides, this is just going to be showing you where to find the live data with our Drive Pro tool. Now, obviously, the live data can be a key tool in diagnosing the air suspension. That brings us to the end of the presentation. I hope you found the information in this presentation to be useful.